How can you build your personal brand by taking advantage of the explosion of podcasts? Now, podcasts, if you're not familiar, I mean, it's sort of like internet radio. I mean, I, it it's almost does it a disservice to talk about that. You know, podcasts are these uh, recordings, often in an interview format, that literally hundreds of thousands of people have now launched and are growing very quickly. One of the things that's kind of cool about podcasting is that this is, it's been called the golden age. I would say it's the early stage. It's big enough to offer some advantages, but not so big that it's being saturated. You know, there's about 250,000 active podcast shows out there. Well, there's over 500 million blogs. So it's not as popular as blogging. It's not as competitive as, as blogging is, but there's enough to show that this is not just a fad, it's gonna be a growing trend. Over 21 million hours of podcast shows are listened to every single day, according to Edison Research. Libsyn, which is the hosting service, said that they are offering up 3.3 billion streams, billion downloads, and podcasting has gone mainstream. All the major newspapers and many of the minor newspapers have launched shows, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Um, uh, there's uh, beginning to be podcast companies that just produce multiple shows. Gimlet, which was started by uh, a former producer and host on NPR, Gimlet now offers several different shows, podcast networks, I guess they're called. And NPR launched a series of shows, most notably their show Serial, uh, which was about a murder. And uh, that ended up being the most popular podcast show in history, getting about 5 million listens in, uh, I think it was early uh, 2016, if my year is right. Uh, you might be familiar with Tim Ferriss, 4-Hour Workweek, and other books. He has one of the more popular shows out there, especially in the business space. Five million downloads a month. John Lee Dumas has a popular show called Entrepreneur on Fire, EO Fire. He gets about a million listens a month, just to give you the size and scope. And uh, Pew Research looked at this data. So the question was, you know, all Americans who have listened to a podcast in the past month, you can see a great steady trend line were over 20%, over one out of five Americans have listened to a podcast, um, you know, in, uh, in the last month. And when they asked the similar questions, have you ever listened to a podcast? It was about 36% of Americans. Now, I don't have the data here, but also depending on your demographic, you're going to get results much better than this. You know, the vast majority of Americans still don't know how to listen to a podcast, but it's very age specific. I think, you know, people in the in the tech space, the digital space, Silicon Valley, you know, all of those people know how to listen to a podcast, are listening to podcasts. Young people tend to be listening to podcasts more than older people. But basically this type of media, this channel is big enough to take advantage of now and is trending uh, on, on, on the upswing. Within podcasting themselves, you'll also see authors, speakers, consultants, coaches, gurus of all kind are raving about the ROI of either you know having their own show or being guests on other people's shows. Hal Elrod wrote The Miracle Morning and several other books. He said the number one way he promoted his show was he went on 160 different podcasts as a guest. Pat Flynn, um, who has uh, his own podcast, but he also takes advantage of blog posts and video, you know, basically all media channels. He said podcasting is, is the most effective. If you could only do one thing, it would be podcasting. Um, Lewis Howes, The School of Greatness, he talked about when he launched his book, The School of Greatness, podcasting, he found, was the most effective way to get his message out there and to move books. The other advantage about podcasting is, especially if you're going to be a guest, in many ways, it's just very time efficient. You know, for myself, if I'm going to write a blog post, it will take me one to two hours to do a mediocre, an average blog post. And that post might get a couple thousand views to five or 10,000 views on Forbes. 
And think about if you were investing one or two hours on a blog post and let's say you were only putting it on Medium or your own website, you might not even get a thousand views. But if you go on to other people's podcast, it's about a 30 minute commitment of time, maybe an hour to, to do the whole pre-interview, interview, post-interview uh, work. And suddenly you are reaching usually thousands of listeners. Um, you don't have to, to uh, do a lot of the headache stuff that goes involved with, with writing you know, articles or other things. The other benefit is by going on other people's shows, or if you have your own show and you're inviting guests on, you're really building up your social capital. You're building your network with influencers. Either way, you know, if they have their own show, they've got some mojo and now you're becoming professional friends with them. If you have your own show and you're bringing guests on, usually they are authors or experts in their field. And so this is just a great way because it's an interview format primarily. It's a great way to quickly build uh, you know, your access to very influential people. Now, as I've mentioned, there's really two ways to win with podcasting. You can have your own show. You can be the host of your own show, or you can be a guest on other people's shows. Now, to be a host, you know, there are some advantages. You know, I think uh, I do have uh, my own podcast, and it's not, it's not particularly hard or expensive to do. You know, you need some decent recording equipment, you know, microphone and, and things like that. Um, you need to decide, are you going to do a monocast, meaning you're just going to talk out loud and record yourself, or is it going to be an interview format? And I'll say, you know, my own strategy on that, I did the Extreme Productivity Podcast with Kevin Cruz as my first podcast. It was intentionally short and intentionally a monocast. And in fact, I basically took the most popular uh, parts of my book, 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management, and I read it almost like an audio book. Now, I would change it up, the, the opening and the ending. I'd make it a little bit more conversational, but I didn't even have to create new content. And you could do this with your blog posts. You could do it with your book. You could do it just off the top of your head. And so I was creating a 10 to 20 minute show of me talking about a different topic, how to pick your priorities, how to stay focused. Uh, what are the most popular apps for productivity on your phone? You know, every week was another topic. And with very little uh, time, very, very little money, I launched this show and very quickly was getting to the 10,000 listens per month um, metric, which is kind of your, the first milestone you'd like to be at. And to get to think about that, I mean, thousands of new listeners, new people, and most of them were new. Um, you know, I get emails from people saying, I discovered you from your podcast. I get that all the time. And I get others who say, I discovered you from reading your book. You know, I think a lot of blog readers are not podcast listeners and a lot of podcast listeners don't read blog posts. So I think it's a new audience as well. Uh, so after doing the monocast show, getting the equipment right, getting comfortable with recording myself, figuring out and basically in my case, putting a team in place to edit the episodes, upload the episodes and, and, and all of that, you know, I've now recently launched an interview format. In fact, it's a daily, went from a weekly to a daily and a monocast to an interview format. And so I think that, you know, that's something, if you want to be the host of your own show, consider doing uh, a smaller show, an easier show first, just to get the groundwork laid. And then you can always build to do something more substantial. If you want to learn more, uh, uh, the details, again, what equipment to get, what software to use, how to invite guests on, etc. cetera. Um, there's tons. You can Google around and find tons of online tutorials. These are particularly good. Uh, EO Fire, this is John Lee Dumas, the podcast workflow, or Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income, Launch a Successful Podcast. These are free, information-rich uh, pages that you can use. And then I encourage you, uh, you know, I, I don't benefit from this myself, but just invest a little bit of money to, if you're going to launch your own podcast, take a course, get a coach of some kind. I spent, I don't know what it was, $1,000 to join John Lee Dumas's Podcaster's Paradise. Not only do you get many, many hours of tutorials to walk you through everything, but you get uh, I, I don't know, is it a weekly or a monthly live webinar with John so that you can actually ask him your specific questions and he's got a private Facebook group. And what's great is that 
you know, it's, you, the tutorials are nice, but the community is really helpful. You know, I've used that community to launch my show and to get, you know, new listeners and, and podcast reviews from that audience. I've gotten feedback on potential show titles. Uh, people talk about, um, you know, I was having some audio difficulty and I was able to find audio engineers in that audience to listen to my shows and to give me feedback on what I was doing wrong. So I think if you're going to take this seriously, it's, it, you know, and I, I just know Podcasters Paradise, but I think there's several others out there. Um, I think Podcast Answer Man is another popular one. Podcast School is maybe another one. And so anywhere from probably 500 to 1,000 bucks, you can get training, you can get an equipment list, and you get access to a coach. Now, even easier and maybe more effective, I don't know, uh, is to just don't do the headache of having your own show. Just be a guest on other people's show. Remember, Hal Elrod got on 160 shows. He was interviewed 160 times in a year. And, you know, I, I use this term jokingly, but it lets you hijack the audience of an established thought leader over and over and over again. Uh, you know, I was I was interviewed eventually as a guest on John Lee Dumas's show, EO Fire. Well, if he's got a million listens and maybe, I don't know how many that is, 100,000, 200,000 unique listeners, suddenly they are introduced to my name, my message, and my offer. The trick into being a guest is you, know, you have to find the right podcast, you know, the ones that are going to match your topic. Their audience matches what your brand is, what your brand value proposition is. You need to then pitch the podcast host, or if they're a big show, they'll have a, a producer that's producing the show for them. And then you need to nail the interview. You need to answer questions in a certain way that's gonna gonna you know turn into customer, turn into buyers, or at least get into your marketing funnel. So my recommendation, I mean, I was on a, I've probably been a guest, uh, I don't even know, you know, 50 to 100 times before I decided to launch my own show. And then when I launched my own show, I did a simple show for almost a year, and then I launched a bigger, more complicated show. I think that's a good format uh, to follow. And I'll dive into the details of, you know, how to be a guest, how to land that spot and nail the interview in other tutorials.